Hey everyone, welcome back to the UI Principles series. In the last video, we talked about how to apply white space in UI design. In today's video, we're going to take a deep dive into color slash color theory in UI design. And if this is your first time, thanks for tuning in. My name is Brendan. I'm a product designer here in Los Angeles. The first thing that we're going to do in this video is define color and color theory. Then we're going to take a look at the seven elements of color. After that, we're going to take a look at color psychology, the golden ratio, and the color rules in UI design. Then we're gonna talk about choosing colors and color palettes or color schemes. Lastly, I'm gonna be giving you some resources and we're gonna go through three exercises. That way we really hone in on learning these concepts. I hope you're ready to learn. Let's get into the video. All right, so let's first start off by defining color and color theory. So color. Color refers to the different colors of each element within the interface. It is used to evoke feeling or emotion. Now let's define color theory. It is both an art and a science of using color. It explains how humans perceive color and the visual effects of how colors mix, match, or contrast with each other. Color theory also involves the messages colors communicate and the methods used to replicate color. And lastly, there are several elements of color. I have seven here. These elements include hue, chroma, value, saturation, tones, tints, and shades. So now we're gonna take a deep dive into these elements. So first is hue, and hue is the base color of the pure pigment of that color at a base level, AKA the colors of the rainbow. I pulled the hue color from Figma that you can see here below. You'll use the hue scale in order to create the hue. Now chroma refers to the purity of a color. Chroma can be thought of as the brightness of a color in comparison to white. So in order to apply chroma, what you'll do is you'll tweak values from left to right when you're using this scale. So in order to give it brightness, you'll obviously want to tweak it up and to the left. Now with value, it refers to how light or dark a color is. So lighter colors have a higher value. In order to do that, you have to tweak values from top to bottom. So from here, you start at the top or start at the bottom. As we mentioned, if you were to go lighter, then you would go upwards on the scale and that would be a lighter value. All right, so now let's talk about saturation. Saturation refers to how strong or weak a color is, so a high saturation is strong. So when you're trying to apply saturation, what you would do is go from top right to bottom left in this scale, but this kind of gives you a quick summary of what that would look like. Low saturation being on the left, high saturation being on the right. Now let's talk about tones. Tones are created when gray is added to a hue. So generally it's duller or softer, than looking at pure hues. So in order to apply tone, you wanna to move from right to left or left to right. In this case, you would be moving probably realistically more left to right. Um, obviously you can see the gray is on the left side of the scale. So now let's talk about tints. So in order to add tints, you're just adding white to the color. So you're moving up into the left. So as you can see, white would be at the very top left is FFF and then um, if you want to still keep the red in this instance, you would just move a little bit over to the right. Now let's talk about shades. So shades is created when black is added to a hue, making it darker. So the, it's basically the opposite of tint. You would add colors in the bottom left to the hue, as you can see actually in this example. Now let's talk about color psychology. So what is color psychology? It's the study of how colors determine human emotions and behaviors. We react to colors based on a complex series of interactions between personal tastes, family upbringing, and our cultural background. Now let's talk about the meaning of different colors. So every color is associated with different emotions. Using colors wisely can improve user experience and increase desired behavior, including conversion rates in significant ways. The last thing you should know is that testing designs with real users is such a vital part of creating a color palette and choosing colors for your designs. So basically what I'm trying to say here is don't just settle on the first color palette that you choose. You wanna test it. Um, and actually the company that I work at right now, we're doing this, uh, we're creating a new color palette and trying to test this with users. So um, that's something I'm applying right now. Here are two examples of um, images that you can find online where it talks about how different colors associate with different uh, meanings or, or words or emotions. So as you can see here with red, some examples on the left are excitement, strength, love, and energy. And then there's additional ones here. So stimulation or stimulating, bold, vital, and courageous. Now, another one we can look at is purple. So royalty, luxury, spirituality, ambition, 
And then if you look over here, it's wise, creative, and imaginative. Uh, so, so keeping these things in mind are important. I would say do some additional research if you're gonna be adding a color palette and it's gonna be more global because as I mentioned, there are cultural differences and you wanna be able to look those up. I didn't include that here in this presentation because really there's just too much to go over, but I would do additional research on that. All right, now let's talk about the golden ratio. You've probably heard of it, you may not know what it means. The golden ratio is the number used when two quantities are divided in a way that the ratio is the same as the ratio of the sum to the large one of the two quantities. That number is 1.618, also phi. As you can see here on the left, this is what the golden ratio actually looks like. Now that may have sounded really complicated, but it's fairly simple to apply. So all you have to do is simply multiply an element size by 1.618 to figure out the size of another element or overlay the golden spiral to adjust their placement. You can use the golden ratio to guide in your layouts, typography, imagery, and more. So let's talk about applying the golden ratio to typography. So first you gotta decide the order of importance of the various typography elements within the design. So let's say for example, you have three font elements that you're using, we'll call it A, B, and C. Let's say that C is set at a 10 point font. What you will do is multiply that by 1.68 to get a rough guide for the larger sized elements. Now for images, you'll overlay the spiral on the images to see which elements sit where and if they really do create harmony. Using the golden spiral, you're ultimately working out where focal points need to be and how to centralize a headline or for maximum impact or which elements need to be shifted to give the design more energy. Now let's talk about layout. So when you're challenged with a bunch of different elements in a layout, when you lay out the golden spiral, it will actually help to guide the placement of each element. We're naturally drawn to the center of the spiral, so it's often best to place your most important messages there. Now let's look at some examples of the golden ratio. So this first one here on the left, what you can see is the golden ratio doesn't have to be in the exact same um, format as you saw here. So you can adjust it to fit the design, basically meaning you can flip it vertically or horizontally. In the middle here, you can also see it works for mobile designs. There is a slight tint of orange over the design, but you can generally see that the most important information is where the spiral is tightly bound. And the lastly is an example of Coursera here. If you guys have never used Coursera, I'd highly recommend it. You can take great courses there. But what they did is they centered their text and the join for free button in the spiral. That way people are looking at the most important information when they get to the site. And that's where our eyes naturally go. Okay, now let's talk about the eight color rules in UI design. So the first rule is branding colors. You wanna keep your core colors to one or two, that way people can associate you, your colors with your product or service. The second is functional. These are the colors that make up your architecture of your UI. So for example, your nav bar, modals, text, and links. The third is feedback, and usually these you use these colors to indicate the state of an action. So for example, you can use it as a success or fail banner. So let's say they upload an image on your site, you would put up a success or failure banner, that way you give them feedback as to whether the task was completed. The next one is accent. So these colors are used to highlight copy, metrics, or important information. The other four are neutral interactions, contrast, and colorblind. So for neutral, these are the bookends of your color palette. Usually what you can do is take one of the main colors of your color palette and then give it a little bit of brightness or give it a little bit of darkness and that creates an additional uh, neutral color for your color palette. So for interactions, these are the states of symbols or elements in your design system that have multiple colors. So, so for example, like buttons, like a hover state or you know a resting state um, or an active state, right? So these are all the different states that you can have um, or the different symbols that you can have for interactions. Next is contrast, and I put in parentheses, this is up next because this is actually the next UI principle we're gonna be covering. But what contrast does, it ensures your colors, visuals, and typography work hand in hand together. The next one is colorblind. So there are eight types of colorblindness. Make sure that you follow accessibility guidelines. I'm gonna be giving you guys resources, so we're not gonna be going into colorblindness in this video, but we will probably go over it in a later video. Now let's look at three things to consider when choosing colors. First is the 60-30-10 rule. 
And in order to bring balance into the composition, the colors should be combined in the proportion of 60, 30, and 10. What does that mean? Well, the biggest part should go to the dominant hue, then the third of the composition takes the secondary color, and the 10% will go to that of usually like accent colors. And then the a second thing to consider is to strive for color harmony. Color harmony is about the arrangement of the colors and design in the most attractive and effective way for the user's perception. And lastly, I'm just gonna reiterate, consider the psychology of colors because each color has its own influence on our mind and the knowledge of the possible reactions that can transfer the right message and call users to make the expected action that they would like them to do. Now let's talk about color palettes. First, let's define what a color palette is. It's a combination of colors used by UI designers when designing an interface. And when used correctly, color palettes form the visual foundation of your brand. They help maintain consistency and make your user interface aesthetically pleasing and enjoyable to use. There are different types of color schemes that you can follow in order to initially create your color palette, just to make it a little easier on you. The various types that we're gonna be looking at are monochromatic, analogous, complementary, split complementary, triadic, and tetradic. So first let's take a look at monochromatic and analogous. So monochromatic color schemes are made up with different tones, shades, and tints with a specific hue. In this case, it looks like it's a purplish pink. Now analogous is using three colors that are next to each other on the 12 spoke color wheel, which you can simply just search 12 spoke color wheel and you'll be able to see this. Traditionally, analogous color schemes all have the same chroma level, but by using tones, shades, and tints, we add interest to the schemes and adapt them to our needs for designing websites or designing a user interface. Complementary. This is created by combining colors from opposite sides of the color wheel. In their most basic form, these schemes consist of only two colors, but can easily be expanded using tones, tints, and shades. So as you see here below, we have a, basically like a yellow and a purple. Now let's talk about split complementary. In this scheme, instead of using colors that are opposites, you use colors on either side of the hue or opposite of your base hue. So it's actually pretty similar to the one on the left and uh, a few of the ones that we've gone over as far as the colors that they chose. So there's like a pink, there's a purple, and a green here. And lastly, let's look at triadic. So triadic schemes are made up of hues equally spaced around the 12 spoke color wheel. So what we have here is like a blue and a pink and like a yellow. And next is tetradic, which is the richest of all the schemes because it's using four colors arranged in two complementary color pairs. And this is probably the most complex one to create, but you can do research to find some good examples out there and then that'll get you started. So, and here are some resources to get those color palettes started. Coolers is my favorite probably, Color Hunt is my second favorite, and I thought Color Drop was another really good one, but you could just search Color Palette Generator on Google and there's gonna be tons of options out there. All right, so let's practice what we've learned. We just went over a ton of information. We're gonna be doing three different exercises. The first one we're gonna do is apply the golden ratio to a hero section. Then what we're gonna do is select a color palette, and lastly, we're going to be applying that color palette. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you go to the Google Drive link in the description, you're gonna see these assets that are on the screen. These are the elements that you're gonna be using to put into the desktop artboard on the left in order to create golden ratio. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes to work on this, and then when we get back together, I'm gonna to show you how I did it. Realistically, there's probably only one or two ways to do it, but feel free to be creative. Let's see what you come up with. All right, great job. Now I'm gonna show you mine. So this is how I use the golden ratio. I had the three images below, which aren't that important, but they still add some design elements to the page. Then obviously you have your elements on the top left and the top right, which are your, your logo, your menu items, and then your you know login button. And so the golden ratio is meant to specifically focus on the illustration that we added here, but secondly, the text on the left side could be used. And realistically, what you could have done is flipped this to be uh, the opposite way so that you would be focusing on the left-hand side, which maybe is the most important part of the design. So this is one of the other options you could have gone with. So now what you're gonna do in this second exercise is pick a color palette that you want to introduce to that hero section. You can use whichever color palette tool you're familiar with or comfortable with, but go ahead and choose a color palette, and the third exercise, what we're gonna do, is apply that color palette to that hero section. So go ahead and choose your color palette, and we'll sync up here in a second. 
All right, now you should have chosen your color palette. I have mine here on the right. Now what you're gonna do is add the color palette that you should have on your artboard to the main hero section. I'm not gonna be doing it, but I want you guys to take a shot at it. And after you're done adding the color palette, we're gonna sync up here and go over some final resources for you to look over. That way you can just continue learning on different categories within color. All right, you guys did a great job. We're gonna go over a couple final resources. These are gonna be in the description and you're gonna be able to learn topics like color mixing, color wheel basics, colors by culture, golden ratio, and color blindness. I didn't cover these because there's just so much to go over with color theory, but a lot of great resources here. If you guys found value from this video, please give it a like. Make sure to subscribe so you can stay in the know for all of the other UI principles that we're gonna be covering, and I'll see you guys in the next one.